Hello everyone, Dr. Akshay Kumar Kamli again. I will be discussing this case regarding your approach to a neuro case in exam. I'm working as a consultant neuroradiologist and this is how I would approach if this comes um, in day-to-day -day practice. So let's crack on. This patient is presenting with a history of uh, fever and he has some uh, so neurological deficit history of fever and this is the scan the history is acute and when you get something with a fever you need to think of two things but we'll come to that later on so whenever you are describing a case in your exam you first start with most of you focus a lot on signal on MR uh, which is fair which is important but what is more important than signal is where it is located anatomically for example if I am to describe this case I would say there is a relatively large lesion noted in the right thalamus region predominantly also going around to involve internal capsule especially its posterior limb and there is some hyperintensity noted in the globus pallidus and putamen but predominantly the lesion is in the right thalamus so once you are done that you will come back to signal intensity you will say this lesion is predominantly t2 hyperintense however i can note there are some hypo intense areas within it and you will want to characterize it better so why it is hypo intense rem inside that and let's get on to the different sequence so which sequence you want to ask examiner is also important because the case might have n number of sequences and you will get lost in it so in my routine work i would look at diffusion first so let's crack on and look at diffusion i would make a layout so that you will be able to see diffusion and t2 side by side that's a diffusion image and that's t2 image ah you will say ah it looks very similar to each other why is that because this is because this is B50 or B0 image. What is this? Is it 50 pounds? 50 rupees? No. <laughs> That's a gradient strength. So 50 or 0, which is like a minimum gradient strength, diffusion image will look like a T2 image. So sometimes when you are in hurry, for example, in stroke case, you can just do diffusion and you don't need to do T2 at all because you see it's T2 -t 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 like. I like to say it uh, <laughs> proxy T2 to uh, V0 match. So once you move on from V0 match, you have this, which is a money shot, I call it, <laughs> because that's what you are looking for that's a b1000 some people like to do more than that some people like to do less than that but around it will be b1000 so again 1000 is not the amount of money you owe someone <laughs> it is a gradient strength again so as you see when when you go from b0 to b1000 you want to see whether there is a diffusion restriction. So even if you don't have ADC map, you can fairly comment just based on B0 and B1000. For example, if something is hyper on B0 sprite and it is not losing its signal intensity on B1000, you are fairly certain that it will be low on ADC map. You don't have to take my word for it. This is the ADC map and 
that's it there is a diffusion restriction so let's coming back to our lesion there is a diffusion restriction in the center of the lesion that is a really important finding so diffusion restriction in the center of the lesion you might be thinking why i'm typing <laughs> why am i talking slow because i'm writing at the same time and i feel i have a newfound respect to our teachers who used to teach on blackboards i am amazed at how they used to keep talking while writing <laughs> so this patient has a diffusion restriction in the center as well as there is something this going on in the center you kind of saw that on t2 isn't it we did we kind of tried to comment on it we, we said there is a t2 uh, hyper intensity hypo intensity around you see that hmm that is interesting isn't it so that's t2 hypo intense and it is very much prominent here which is low signal so what do you think that is so that is actually a susceptibility artifact so you see diffusion doesn't really like anything which is throwing susceptibility artifact is there any way you can confirm it of course you can do swi if you haven't done swi <laughs> you can do you can do something like a gradient which is like a poor man's swi and there you go that's a gradient echo and you can see there is just a blooming around there if you would have done swi here you would have seen quite a bit of blooming around so so you you have something which is t2 hypo intense uh, around the rim on uh, dwi there is a central diffusion restriction and on gre there is a blooming and what else you also have this peripheral area which is not really showing diffusion restriction why do i say that because you also confirm that on edc see the surrounding area is not showing that much diffusion restriction so what is that that is likely edema some people like likely uh, want to call it vasogenic edema and what not i do not want to uh, i don't usually like that term you know why because sometimes when you are reporting tumor scan and you're trying to call it edema but then you do multi-voxel spectroscopy and you find colon peak there and then you feel ah why i call it edema but in this case you're not thinking this is tumor why is that because if this was tumor it would show diffusion restriction in mm -hmm, i'm waiting for you guys to say in chorus in periphery of the region so if this is a tumor like a gpm you have a diffusion restriction in the periphery if so that's gpm or a tumor it could be metastasis as well it will show diffusion restriction in the periphery if gpm or metastasis is small it will show solid diffusion restriction but it will not show this t2 hypo intense rim around but anyway <laughs> it's very difficult for you guys to catch these small things we call it molecular gpms and whatnot forget i said this this is not important in your viva do not blurt this out so <laughs> let us let us rub that out before some of you take a snapshot of it and go crazy about it. so anyway I forgot to mention about lymphomas. So lymphomas will be T2 hypo intense. In this case, that is not the case because it was T2 hyper intense and lymphomas are mostly periventricular. They can be seen in the right thalamic region as well, but the signal intensity on T2 would be hypo. They will show solid diffusion restriction, which can confuse you with the abscess to be fair because 
abscess is showing central diffusion restriction but then you can also look at contrast lymphoma will show homogeneous contrast enhancement while abscess will show peripheral contrast enhancement because of the necrotic core that's how you differentiate between lymphoma and abscess thank you so for your exam if something is showing diffusion restriction in periphery that is tumor if something is showing diffusion restriction within centrally that is abscess abscess is like nightmare for neurosurgeons so as soon as you say abscess they go crazy so <laughs> you have to be really really sure when you say this usually these cases come when you're on call your registrar is calling you and you're giving them a diagnosis in your exam they are trying to find whether you're a safe radiologist so this is the case if i'm your examiner will bring to assess whether you know the difference between abscess and something tumor because abscess has a totally different management if something is tumor you can follow them up you can do serial imaging you can wait for neuro-oncology mdt people to come around and discuss what they're going to do but if something is abscess they can want to drain it or start them on antibiotic and treat it so yes so and this is your favorite sequence which everyone wants to see <laughs> which is contrast and as you would have uh, expected there is an enhancement in the rim around and around there there is an edema uh, which is deep t1 hypointense so that's an abscess uh, what are the negative points you should be seeing in this so negative point you should say in this is whether there is a meningeal enhancement whether there is any other focus of abscess also you need to look at mastoids and sinuses whether there is a mastoiditis breaching bone and causing abscess whether there is any extracranial focus of infection maybe in scalp maybe osteomyelitis somewhere is there any skull based osteomyelitis is, is there any pre-vertebral abscess when you scroll down C1, C2? So you need to look at everything when you're reporting it, whether there is a sinus thrombosis, venous sinus thrombosis being caused by the abscess, whether there is an infarct caused by the abscess, whether orbits are normal, and what questions you should ask examiner, whether the patient is immunosuppressed, because something like a toxoplasma or tuberculosis are quite common in immunosuppressed. Immunosuppression doesn't necessarily mean something like human immunodeficiency virus. It could be something like a um, patient has undergone transplant or it could be someone who has undergone chemotherapy. And it could be a number of things. You can ask examiner that. If you do not know the history, you should ask whether this patient has presented acutely, whether this patient has a history of fever, whether there is any suspicion that this patient has an abscess. Those are also a valid point. What else you could do to confirm this is abscess? <laughs> you can do actually perfusion, which will not show increased perfusion. You can show you can also do spectroscopy, which I obviously love. And in this case, if you do single voxel also, that will suffice. It will show lipid lactate peak. But then some people love to say if it's fungal, it shows trihalose peak and something like that. Not really needed for your exam. So in your exam, I would expect you to know diffusion. If you know something like SWRM, well and good. But you need to know about diffusion and you need to say there is a central diffusion restriction and there is a peripheral edema. And because this is a central diffusion restriction, I'm considering this as an abscess rather than tumor. And that's it. That's the only case we discussed. And that's how you approach that's this case. Thank you. And we'll see you guys next time when we are discussing something else. And please let us know in feedback what all you want. And if any of you wants to volunteer and to be recorded. And we'll try to keep you keep you guys anonymized. <laughs> so that you don't have to worry that people finding out who you are. And if you're bold enough, you can also appear. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Take care.